So I'm doing my second yellow stonefly pattern in a row. The last one was a yellow sally tied on a clink hammer hook. Today's is another female tied with the red egg sac, but it's a very different fly. It's got some squirrel tail and antron for a wing, but it's also a foam body. And I am tying it on a long hook. It's a size 16, but it's three extra long. So really the bug is probably about the size of a 14. And I am using a fairly unique technique for the body. It's a closed cell foam, but I'm cutting it in a really thin strip and then just wrapping it up like I would a dubbing. So it's not at all a hopper type body. And what this technique will do for you is it creates a fly that floats pretty well, but it doesn't float high. So in theory, the body should sit down there in the surface film with both the red butt and the wing visible to the fish. Now, is this gonna be buoyant enough to hang a weighted nymph off as a dropper? I don't really know, I guess we're gonna see. And since I just came up with this one and it doesn't have a name, if I have any luck with it, with the Yellow Sally Hatch in the Great Smoky Mountains next week, I suppose we could give it a name other than this generic yellow stonefly. But either way, it's a fun one to tie. So there it is in the vise, just my generic yellow stonefly. I'm gonna fish for a yellow sally hatch here this spring. Now I'm tying this on a size 16. It's 3X long Kershaint hook. Let's pinch that barb here. And I'm gonna be using yellow thread, 70 denier. Let's take a base back to the, oh, where the barb was. Now there are a lot of ways you could put a red butt egg sac on this. I'm taking two strands of a four strand yarn. You could just as easily dub a little noodle on here and put it on that way. But I've found this might be just a little bit quicker. So we catch that in and then just fold it over. Get a little bump right there. Kind of like the, the butt of a, a Dave's Hopper, I think, uses this little technique. And that's, you know, way big right there. So let's take it back close some of this off right here. Okay, that's about how much I want right there. So we'll get rid of this excess up front. Now we'll take our thread up here about a third of the way back. And for the body, this is where I'm different a little bit. This is a two millimeter foam and I've cut it about two millimeters wide. So it's kind of a square little piece here. I'm gonna catch it in up front and then squish it pretty flat going back. Now I'm just gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna pull it pretty tight, which is effectively taking a, a pretty buoyant material and making it less so by pulling it kind of tight here. But that's fine. I don't want a high floater, but tying it this way will, it'll still be a pretty good floater, just not a real high one. Let's bury this nub just a little bit right here. And the next thing I want to catch in, just some Antron fibers here. Not a big tuft. It's just going to give it a little bit of flash under the squirrel wing we're going to tie in in a second. I'll leave it a little long so I can trim it to size here in a, just a second. Snip the front and then for the back, just a little bit longer than that butt there. And for the proper wing, just some gray squirrel. Unstacked, not a huge tuft of it. Want it to be maybe a little bit longer than that underwing right there. So let's go about right there. I'm gonna spin my thread clockwise to cord it up a little bit. Could have put some wax on it. It might have been smart, but I think we'll be fine right there. So there's our wing there. A few tight wraps going forward before I snip this. And I'm gonna to try to snip this at a little bit of an angle. So hopefully I can get a little taper right here which will make it a little bit easier to wrap this hackle. So spend a few thread wraps right here if you need to just try to smooth this area out. Well, I did not get a very smooth taper right there. I got a little bit of drop, but we'll see if we can work with it. And for the hackle, just white, white dry fly rooster feather here. And I'm undersizing it a little bit, but I'm gonna use a lot of it several wraps. So go ahead and bury this in up front and then snip it off. Now let's take our wraps. We're going to do several wraps 
six, seven or more wraps to get us up here to the eye. Okay, maybe that was five, but it'll be enough. And before I snip it, I wanna just pull these back. Try to create a little flat spot up here for my whip finish. Now we can snip this excess and see if we have any cleanup. We've got one fiber here going forward. Just snip or pluck that. Take a look, can you still get your tippet through? I think we're in fine shape. So there you go, my little generic yellow stonefly. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.